Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Kelly Cook, Scott Hepburn, Jeff Wilkes, and brand new patrons, Errol and Chris. Everybody, welcome Errol and Chris. Good to have you alongside. Yay. On this episode of DTNS, Apple reveals their AI strategy for the future at WWDC, and Google's helping reduce how long you have to wait at a stoplight. This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, June 10th, 2024 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. From the edge of Atlanta, I'm Nika Montfort. From the suburbs of Atlanta, this is Terrence Gaines. And from the edge of LA, I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. I have to say, for a WWDC day, it's not bad. Y'all add those extra edges in the outskirts (laughs) just for us when we show up. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Actually, no, Patrick gets one too, except he, he has a zip code. Uh, but Patrick, right. Patrick is in the city of St. Louis. Is that but what he saying? always says? The outskirts. I know. It's uh, because he's towards the end of the city. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, y- y'all can say whatever you want uh, when you're introducing as as, as ever. Uh, are you are you uh, WWDC'd out yet? It's a lot to take in. I don't think I've mentally wrapped my head around all the stuff they announced. Yeah. But uh, so far, so good. It's not overwhelming, but it's just I haven't sat with it yet a lot of ones <laughs> yeah a lot of things to digest and i'm looking forward to at the time of this recording the uh platforms state of the union is going on so i'm looking forward to to popping into that where they go a little bit deeper um into all of the different features for the software they announced so yeah yeah a little more of the I'm apis and all of that yeah. stuff yeah all right well let's start with the quick hits Microsoft announced a few updates to the Xbox lineup. There'll be a white version of the Xbox Series X with no disc slot. So this is for the all-digital crowd. Specs are the same as the rest of the Series X lineup with a one-terabyte hard drive coming later this year for $450. There's also a new Xbox Series X console with a disc slot and a two-terabyte hard drive. That one's coming for $599.99. And a version of the all-digital Xbox Series S in white as well for $349.99. No mention of the cylindrical design that was leaked under the name Brooklyn earlier this year. Xbox head Phil Spencer continued his practice of commenting on the idea of a handheld game console from Microsoft. When asked about it at IGN Live, he said that he was excited to talk about, quote, different form factors and at a later date um, and said, quote, I think being able to play games locally is really important. Nokia demonstrated the first spatial audio call Monday on existing 5G network running the 3GPP Immersive Video and Audio Services, or IVAS. Current phone calls are monophonic, and IVAS offers spatial audio. That means you'll be able to tell where voices are coming from relative to other voices. Nokia told Reuter, Reuter, I always get that wrong, Reuters, (laughs) Reuters, <laughs> that IVAS is becoming standardized, so network providers, chipset, chipset manufacturers, handset manufacturers can begin to implement in their products. The standard is coming to the 5G advanced network upgrade, so expect to see it available in phones in a few years. Yeah, it's not coming anytime soon. Uh, security researchers demonstrated a vulnerability in the Visual Studio Code marketplace by making a fake version of the Dracula official theme that's used by a lot of coders that had no difference to the real one, except that it collected your host name, number of installed extensions, domain name, and operating system, and sent that to a remote server. That demonstrated that more malicious uses could be conducted. They disclosed the project in the README text. Uh, Then they examined extensions on the marketplace to look for ones they didn't make that had malicious code, and they found 1,283 of them. Those had been installed by coders 2.229 2.229 million times. All malicious extensions were reported to Microsoft through the majority, though the majority have not yet been removed. So be careful out there in the old Visual Studio Code world. Don't want Windows, but do want Snapdragon X Elite's chip efficiency. German PC maker Schenker has a prototype that can run Debian through. 
When Computer Base visited the booth at Computex, it was not working. However, the goal is for Tuxedo Computers to eventually sell these. Yeah, there will no be no Microsoft Windows recall if you run Debian on the Snapdragon <laughs> X Elite chip. All right, uh, before we get to the Apple WWDC stuff, which is what we're going to spend most of the episode talking about, I uh, wanted to point out something the Wall Street Journal talked about called Google Project Greenlight. This is not about films, it's about stoplights. This is a system that uses data from car telemetry and from Google's navigation apps to help cities adjust the timing of their traffic lights. Uh, they don't have to spend any money putting in new equipment. You don't have to add cameras. You don't have to add sensors. It's all just data analysis. Uh, doing this once a year would be an improvement, though, because apparently municipalities only update their light timing every five years at most. Mm. Uh, sometimes it's even longer. Project Greenlight takes data from Google navigation apps, so like Waze and Google Maps, as well as the University of Michigan's access to General Motors car telemetry coming straight from the cards, and then it's able to say, based on traffic patterns, we did some data analysis, and we think if you adjust your light timing to fit this pattern, it'll be better for everybody. So it's not real time, but it's still a big improvement. System has been tested over the last year in several cities, including Abu Dhabi, Hamburg, Seattle, and Kolkata, and in overall showed a 30% reduction in stop-and-go traffic at lights. Until Google decides to cancel the project. <laughs> <laughs> got to get that out of the way, right? Yeah, 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 you got to say The caveat, that. I mean, right? Yeah, right, yeah. right. But, I mean, if this, with them not having to install anything, update anything, add new hardware, I mean, this is exactly what we want from technology to make our lives easier by way of making traffic flow better, especially down here in Atlanta. We can't wait for this to come fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At all. Uh, we, we've had we have similar situations in L.A. I remember when, 10 years ago they were uh, bragging that you, you could uh, drive across Los Angeles and never hit a red light if you're going the speed limit because the traffic lights were all timed so well. I think that lasted maybe a day <laughs> before everything got out of whack because I, right. I have not yet experienced it. And then you also have situations where, yeah, uh, if you're in the city of Atlanta, maybe it improves. But what about when you, you know, get, get into Marietta or you get into mm -hmm. another suburb or, or something like that? Like what happens then? So if you can get an entire region to sync up with this data, which you could, uh, it, it really does improve things. It would be sure it would be better if it was all real time, but that's expensive right now. Uh, and and this is a big improvement. Absolutely. Yep, until, until everything gets standardized, this is yeah. what we got to go with. <laughs> And the f fact that the University of Michigan is involved gives me hope that maybe they won't. <laughs> maybe Google won't cancel this one. Who knows? Look, look, yeah. Google and their track record, Jack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm, I'm not it trying to argue. Either here. way. Yeah. Either way it could go. Uh, well, before we get into the WWDC stuff, uh, I, you may not know that I have a daily newsletter uh, that gets emailed out to, to folks with tech news that has just my perspective. If, if you like to read a little tech news in the morning, uh, you still want to get my my take on it. Uh, you can get that in your inbox. I have a free version that goes out every Thursday, but this week only, Monday through Friday this week, uh, I'm making it available to everybody who subscribes every day of the week. So usually it's paid subscribers get it Monday through Friday. Everybody gets it free on Thursday, but I'm doing a free preview. So if you want to check it out, there were actually two issues today because I sent one out in the morning and then I sent out a second one with all the WWDC stuff. Uh, you can go sign up right now at freetechnewsletter.com. All right, let's jump right in with Apple Intelligence. Uh, Apple Intelligence was the ending announcement. Uh, there was a lot of machine learning stuff in the operating system announcements that Apple made today, uh, but they spent a lot of time speaking specifically about their generative models. There are three ways that your data can be used to provide a generative feature on Apple's devices in these new operating systems. One would be the on-device semantic index, and that's the most uh, privacy-protected one. Uh, it's on your device. Uh, it's it's just a, a, an index file, so it's not taking up a lot of space, uh, and it's not available to anyone but you. But that way, it can be personalized based on what you actually do. The second way is the one that's going to get Apple a lot of questions. They called it the private cloud compute. Uh, it goes to an Apple data center only when it can't be executed locally. 
and it's done on an Apple M1 server that has been inspected by independent experts to assure its privacy. No data is stored. No data is seen by Apple. It's end-to-end -end encrypted. The data is sent, it's processed, and it's disposed. Uh, Apple said all the right things, but of course, we're waiting for that independent audit uh, to understand exactly how this works. But the code is supposedly transparent to the independent experts. The third one is going to be the most troubling. That is, in individual instances in the operating system, let's say you're looking for help rewriting uh, something or, or you want to create uh, a certain kind of text, you will be prompted, hey, ChatGPT could do this for you. Would you be okay sending this image or sending this data to ChatGPT to be processed? You'll be asked every time, which sounds annoying, uh, but that means you can always say no, like do not send this to ChatGPT. Uh, what you get in exchange are a more natural language Siri that is context aware. It can understand what's on your screen. It can understand what you're talking about. You can say like, uh, where's that uh, the thing that, that Nika sent me the other day? Uh, and it'll know what you mean. Another one is called Rewrite, which can proofread and summarize and do all the text stuff, a lot of the Grammarly style stuff that you're familiar with. Notification prioritization. So it can show you notifications it thinks are important. Uh, especially if you're in Do Not Disturb, it might be able to break through and go, you're going to want to see this. And then there's the image playground where you can make images and Gen Moji, where you can make emojis uh, of any kind. Those are both all done in animation, illustration, or sketch style. So no photorealistic images available, but all of this is free, even the chat GPT stuff. So, I mean, free with the purchase of an iPhone, of course, or, or whatever device you're using, because it works on iPads and it works on Macs as well. Uh, but Apple tried to do its best to say, like, we are protecting privacy first, but giving you the benefit of generative models. Uh, Nika, did that work for you? Um, I think in what they're trying to do, this approach they're trying to take for the initial launch of Apple intelligence, I think they are saying all of the right things. Um, particularly, I know a lot of people are very skeptical of ChatGPT and the prompt to ask you every time if you want to use chat GPT, I think that may bring some consolation to people, but I think some people are just going to be able to want to be able to turn it off altogether. And I don't think based on what we saw during the keynote that that is going to be feasible, but I think from what they described, what they said, this Apple intelligence is, I think this is a step in the right direction. The question is always going to end up being, is this really what it says it is? And are people really protected? And I think Apple has earned a lot of trust, particularly from people who are in the ecosystem, who enjoy the ecosystem, that their data is protected. But there's always, especially when you put open AI into the mix, I think people are going to be skeptical. And they said, you know, what they could um, to reassure people. But I think it's going to take some, some time for some people to get comfortable with that concept. Honestly, I think it, I, I beg to differ. And what I mean by that is I don't think just based on the history of people utilizing chat GPT and open AI and whatever Google's thing is now and copilot and all these other things. I think we have gone, in my opinion, we've gone crazy <laughs> as far as all the information <laughs> we're given these things. Right. With the exception of Apple, because Apple from the forefront, security, 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 privacy, privacy, privacy. Now they've got to walk the walk with this generative AI, I mean, more so than before, because you're, it is actually trying to learn you. And I will agree that people kind of get iffy with that, but I think Apple's okay. But I think just off of the precedent that they set, as far as data privacy and security, they had to say, all right, this is going to be secure. This is kind of going to be secure. This is not really, but we still give you the option because people are going to pick it apart because they're Apple and they've stood on, quote unquote, the business of privacy and security. Yeah, I I think 
the it's playing with fire for Apple to talk about generative models in the first place because people are very sensitive to, to that right now. And I know there were some people with some honest questions about, well, can I turn this off on my phone, even the on-device stuff, which to me is like saying, well, can I turn off my file system? Like if you don't trust your own device mm -hmm. to have the semantic index, which is just a bunch of ones and zeros about data that was already on your phone. You, in fact, it would be easier to get data about you from your file system than from the semantic index. I, I feel like you just don't trust the device at all at that point. Uh, however, once it starts going into the cloud, then there becomes, well, it could get intercepted. It's supposed to be end-to-end -end encryption. Let's see what the independent experts uh, say about the code audit, et cetera, et cetera. That's still something where I, I expect to get the audit back and go, yep, this works great. Uh, it, it's, it sounds good to me. Once you bring open AI into the chat, mm -hmm. suddenly everybody loses their rationality. Yep. Uh, and it because, yeah, I don't care if I can say no every time. Uh, they're involved, and I don't trust them at all. And I think that's going to be the hardest one for Apple to navigate here. Yeah, people are going to want to say, can I turn this chat GPT part off? Even yeah. if they're fine with the on-device stuff, even if they're fine with the cloud stuff, because they already have a trust level in Apple, I think the chat GPT integration is going to be... Um, a, a sticking point for people. And they even mentioned, you know, if you have, if you pay, because they said the usage is free, but if you do have a paid tier of chat GPT, you can log into that and have that, you know, at your fingertips as well. So it's one of those things where it can get, um, it can get kind of tricky and um, people are already very aware of their data and the access to it and the way models are trained now, essentially on everything that you're, you're putting out there at, I think they're going to be a, a, a little bit nervous about this. And at the same time, people, when before we got the announcement of what um, Apple's uh, interest in AI is going to be, many people thought, oh, it's just going to be strictly Siri based. But it sounds like Apple intelligence is going to be the foundation. It's the foundational element for Apple going forward as they move into products with Gen AI. Yeah. Uh the other thing to understand about this is it's going to be available for iPhone 15 Pro and iPad and Macs with M1 or later processors. So a lot, a lot of Macs are going to get this. Only the iPhone 15 Pro and then I assume the iPhone 16 whenever that comes. Uh, and the iPad with the M series processors are going to be able to take advantage of this. One thing Apple did really well, though, was they talked about features more than they talked about models. In fact, more than one hour was spent on the operating systems talking about all kinds of machine learning features. Uh, but not calling it Apple intelligence. Mac OS Sequoia will be the name of the next Mac operating system. By the way, all of the operating systems they announced are coming uh, now for devs, betas in July for the public, and then they all are available for everyone to put on their devices sometime this autumn. Mac OS Sequoia has a bunch of features. We're not going to try to go through all of them. It was just like rapid fire, uh, but iPhone mirroring is one of the best ones. Uh, lets you control a locked phone, locked iPhone in standby mode without unlocking it, without taking it out of standby mode if you, do, if you have it in standby mode. But you can do anything you would do on the iPhone without having to unlock it. Automatic yep. window tiling coming to Mac OS, one of my favorite Windows 7 features. Uh, presenter view for video calling coming. So doing more of the will do the stuff in the camera and then send it to your video conferencing app. That works in FaceTime and Zoom. And then the much rumored password app uh, coming across Mac, iPhone, iPad, Vision Pro, and Windows. Not coming to Linux. There's not an app you can get for Android. Uh, but... If all you use are Apple products and Windows machines, uh, you can use the Apple Password app. Uh, although on Windows, it'll be included in the iCloud app. So it's just part of the iCloud app uh, for Windows. Uh, Terrence, what'd you think of Mac OS Sequoia? Uh, definitely looking forward to the iPhone mirroring, not because I need to access my phone that's locked in a backpack or I can't find it, more because of walkthroughs. I do a lot of walkthroughs as far as you know, walk, making tutorials and things and the ability to be able to quickly pull up my iPhone screen without going through the the crazy way that I normally do by opening up QuickTime and starting a movie recording, the ability to 
quickly use this iPhone mirroring if I want to do like a walkthrough on how to set up something or how to access something or because I'm the family IT guy and my mom and my dad and my aunts always asking me how to do something. So instead of sending a bunch of screenshots, I can actually do a quick walkthrough and actually show them how to do it and then, you know, screen record that and send it off as a video. So definitely looking forward to that. Yeah. Nika, what's your favorite yeah. Mac OS Sequoia feature? I have to say the iPhone mirroring was really the standout. Um, Terrence did just go through that. And I will say the password app, um, you know, passwords is natively built into the settings of your iPhone, but now for it to have its own independent app, I think is definitely a step in the right direction because we've seen, you know, breaches that have happened with other um password manager apps um, to have one natively for iPhone, I think is definitely um, a step in the right direction. And definitely one of those things because I use all the time because I never, you know, really remember passwords and you want them long and complex. So it's easier. It's harder for someone to try and hack it or whatever. So I think bringing that app independently outside of the coverage of the settings um, function on yeah, your just phone. Surfacing I think it that's, more. Yeah. Right. I think that's, I think, you know, that's going to be a, a game changer as well for some people. Especially. Yeah. And I, I guess the only other thing I would add is, is underplayed a little in the iPhone mirroring was the fact that you can, you can drag and drop like photos into an iPhone app from your Mac. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, there's, there's some pretty cool stuff going on with that. I can't wait to try that one out. Yeah. Uh, all right. Lots of other operating systems here to iOS 18 uh, will be coming later this year. And you get to customize your home screen. You get to put spaces on it. All the things you can do in Android. Well, I can, not I can all. hear the Android folks. Uh, just <laughs> We've been had <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, my uh, Samsung Galaxy flip owning wife was uh, t t telling me all about it uh, over lunch. But yeah, it can't do all the things Android can do, but it can do some of them now. So if you've been waiting for that as an iPhone owner, you get that. Uh, you can hide apps in a locked folder or you can lock individual app so that when you hand someone your phone, they can't go and open it. Uh, I don't know how often that's a big concern, but you know, better uh, safe than sorry. Uh, Photos app is getting a bunch of smarts, a lot of machine learning stuff. So you can, you can search with natural language, filter by type, create collections based on a person's face, uh, reorder them, pin them. A lot of mail stuff, on-device mail categorization, uh, very Gmail-like primary transactions, updates, promotions can all be separated out. Uh, and, and more text effects messages, uh, new tap backs. You can now tap back with any emoji, uh, stuff like that. Nika, was there, were there any other of these features you liked? Um, I think the thing that um, I was most impressed by and excited for was obviously the customization. And again, as we just mentioned, we know every, everyone else is going to say, oh, we've always had that, blah, 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 blah. But what I can say is it it appears to me that Apple is slowly starting to loosen some of the reins of control that they have you know, hoarded over, you know, all the years that Apple has been ex in existence because they like that control. They like for all iPhones to have a certain aesthetic and look a certain way. So I think kind of cracking that door open and allowing you to customize it to an extent, I think for Apple to get to the point where they're willing to do this, I think that it says a lot. And I don't need, you know, complete, you know, control over customization, but I like the idea that I can move my icon so you can see more of my wallpaper or make the colors of my icons match, you know, yeah, the, yeah. the background. So it makes it a, for those of us who are into the aesthetic and, you know, the prettification of things. Um, I, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that pretty things up. Uh, I, I also thought the, uh, the some of the wallet stuff, like the fact that you can send cash between two phones without, mm. you know, having to have accounts, you could just tap them, uh, you know, with confirmation and everything was cool. Some good uh, event and ticket installments. What about you, Terrence? I was waiting, waiting, waiting. I've been forcing myself to use the Reminders app, the native Reminders app for so long. And Apple mentioned it in passing. Uh -huh. And if you could have watched me in my chair, I lost it. The fact that they <laughs> finally integrated reminders into the calendar app. They said it in passing, but I caught it. And that's what I was looking for the most. Now I can rest easy knowing that whenever I open my calendar app, I can actually see reminders that I actually have added a date and a time to nice. in the calendars app. So they, yeah. they didn't even mention that as far as the big presentation. It was kind of like in the passing when they put up that screenshot. That big, all the yeah. yeah, yeah. they put it in there. I was like, 
I'm good now. <laughs> uh, Sean in our chat room is excited about send later in iMessage, and I saw a few other people excited about that as well. Uh, RCS not mentioned by name, but it was in that big grid that Terrence was talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, RCS support, if you're into that, is coming as part of this update as well. But the big announcement was iPad OS 18 getting calculator. <laughs> that got the biggest cheers. <laughs> Uh, iPad OS 18, getting all the iOS stuff that we talked about as well. Uh, but calculator not only coming to iPad OS, but supporting Apple Pen. So that's how they're justifying it. They're like, we were waiting for a reason to bring it, and now we have it. It's Apple Pen, but pretty cool stuff in that you can just write equations and then pr draw an equal sign and it will calculate them. You can erase parts of the equation and change the number. Uh, that same stuff called Math Notes is also coming to the note taking app. Terrence, did you were you waiting on that kind of stuff? to yeah well not necessarily waiting but it's a definitely added benefit because what me and my wife do with notes is anytime one of our kids come uh birthdays come up christmases anything like that we kind of total out what we want to get them and we add the price next to it so the ability with this new notes um quick math in the notes app i can do the little draw the little line under all of the totals and once I draw that line that equals doing the equal sign, it'll give me the total versus me have to sit there with my calculator on my iPhone and type it all up. So definitely that'll be an added benefit that we use on a regular basis. Nika, calculator? Um, I'm interested in how complex these equations can can get uh, that you could, you know, get a response to as an engineering major. Um, it's it'll be interesting to see, you know, what you can put in and what you can get out, especially when, you know, if you're in school, whether it be high school, uh, college, graduate school, whatever the case may be, how complex uh, are are you going to be able to get with um, using these math notes? But I think it's it's pretty dope the way that it it just works. It yeah. it just you know like you're writing on a regular sheet of paper how it does that computation and gives you the answer based on the prompt of of an equal sign. So I, I thought that was pretty dope. Yeah. They, they showed up uh, algebra handling variables. So, mm -hmm. and they showed off some graphing, although I don't mm -hmm. know how complicated that graphing is going to get. So, of course, they uh, made it look so easy in the video. It always <laughs> does, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, permission to remotely control an iPad or an iPhone uh, was was talked about in that that section. So, if you're doing tech support, you know, for somebody in your family, uh, you can not only draw on the screen to show them stuff, you can you can take over and, and help them fix some settings and stuff. Smart script improves the appearance of your handwriting as you're writing. That's another machine learning thing that's coming. Uh, let's finish up with the other uh, operating system announcements. WatchOS 11 has some new training modes and health features. There's a vitals app that can track what your vital stats look like, what they usually look like, what they're supposed to look like, and make comparisons. Uh, also, big improvements to the cycle tracking and pregnancy tracking features. Vision OS 2 is coming, uh, the first update to the Apple Vision Pro operating system. They showed a couple of new gestures, palm, it up, palm up and tap the finger for home, palm down for control center. Canon has a lens coming that can shoot Apple immersive video, although it's only on one of their mid-range cameras. So Amos, uh, our producer, was asking, like, why? Why just that one? Uh, and eight new countries will get the Apple Vision Pro starting on June 28th with uh, three countries. And then for audio and home, they talked about how with the AirPods, you can now answer a Siri question with yes or no by either nodding or shaking your head so you don't have to speak out loud if you're in like a crowded space or something. TVOS uh, is getting an Amazon X-Ray style feature called Insight, uh, as well as some improvements to the enhanced dialogue settings and 21.9 projector support. Uh, Nika, of, of these last three operating systems, anything catch your eye in particular? Um, not really. Um, I guess it's, it's nice to have, but nothing that really said, oh, wow, I really needed this in my life. No, not so much for me. Yeah. I, I think for the watch fans, there was probably some really exciting things for the watch. Uh, the Vision OS seemed like the smallest one. Uh, AirPods also got some voice isolation features, but uh, yeah, Terrence, anything stand out to you? Well, I was going to say, uh, as it relates to the watch, I think they're getting Apple is getting closer and closer to closer, especially with the split out of the vitals where they have a vitals app. I think they're getting closer and closer and closer to blood pressure and glucose uh -huh. monitoring. I think once they 
kind of flesh out how they want it to look. Once they actually get the ability to actually do your blood pressure, of course, it was going to be hard because you need actual pressure to uh, track your blood. But glucose monitoring as well, if they can nail those two things, I think I will be on, off and running with the Apple Watch. And I think this vitals thing just gets them that much closer. Yeah, it it is clear that Apple has two main audiences for the watch now. Uh, it is fitness and health. And those are intertwined, of course, but but there are people who are way into fitness who want to do all the things that a lot of those fitness features I look at, I'm like, oh, wow, that's way more than I would never need. But there's a lot of people who do. Health-wise, a lot of people are like, yeah, I'm, I'm young, I'm healthy, I don't need all that stuff. But old people like me are like, oh, yeah, Vitals app, good. Yeah, blood pressure coming? Yeah, no, I would definitely like to see that. So uh, they they capture all, all ends of the spectrum in health and fitness, it seems like. Well, that is going to do it for this part of the conversation. We've got more coming on the extended show. Uh, but Nika, uh, thanks for being with us as always. Before we go, I'll let you all tell folks where else they can find you. You can find me personally on at Tech Savvy Diva, pretty much on all of your social media and internet platforms. Also, you can check out the show that Terrence and I co-host, The Snob OS Show, where we talk all things Apple and then some. We um, release our shows on Friday. If you are a Patreon supporter, you can get that on Wednesday. So you can head on over to snobblewestcast.com to get all of those details. Yeah. When, once uh, once you all have had a couple of days to sit with this, it's a, it's a good companion. Here we're like, here's what they announced right away. Uh, at Snob OS, they're going to be able to give you a little more a little more depth, a little couple days reaction. Uh, of course, you'll get Terrence on there too. Thank you, Terrence, for being with us. Uh, what else do you have going on? Yeah, sure. Uh, you can find me all over the internet at Brother Tech. That's B-R-O-T-H-A-T-E-C-H. Like Nika said, I am the other half of the Snob Boys cast. And like Tom said, we'll go definitely in depth a little bit further on this uh, WWDC. In addition to that, myself and Rob Dunwood, who you should be, all be familiar with, and Stephanie Humphrey, we do a podcast called The Tech John, where we talk all things tech from a cultural perspective. So definitely check us out on that. New shows come out every Tuesday. Patrons, stick around for the extended show, Good Day Internet. If you are a patron and you have your RSS feed from there, you're going to hear us talk more about Apple intelligence, and not only what they talked about today and what we think about it, but how it lays the groundwork for future Apple products. You can also catch the show live. Some of you are doing it right now. We're on Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. Find out more about that at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow. Talk to you then. The DTNS family of podcasts, helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>